What is going on, everybody, on Facebook, YouTube, whoever's watching. Hope everyone is having a great day so far. In today's video, I just want to uh, do a little education together and uh, scan the sold listings. We're going to be going through some clothing, and uh, we're just going to get a feel for what items are selling, the brands that are selling, maybe talk about some price points, look at some listings. Just get educated you know, together because that's really key when it comes to you know, making money selling on eBay, regardless of what you're selling, you want to educate yourself and you want to make sure that you know you're prepared to you know put yourself in a position to make money when you're out at the thrift store, yard sales, auctions, Facebook groups, Craigslist, maybe Goodwill.org, anywhere you're going to look for inventory. Education is key, so um, that's what we're going to be doing today. And I just want to make sure that you guys can hear me okay. So if you can, please leave a comment in the uh, comment section, let me know that the audio sounds okay. Let me know that you could also see my screen um, because I'm trying to show you the screen. I'm not trying to so show you myself right now. So um, leave a comment. Let me know that you can see my screen and uh, let me know that you can hear me okay. So I'm going to go into the comment section, try to figure this out and see if it works. All right, let's refresh this and see if I can see any comments. What is going on, Silver Taco? I love that name right there. Hope your day's going all right. Again, leave a comment, guys. Bear with me for a few minutes. I want to make sure that you can hear me okay and that the uh, the screen is shared with you so we can go through these items and really learn together. So I'm going to give it a minute, wait for some comments to come in, and uh, see what is happening. Hopefully this is working all right. Uh, I'm not an expert when it comes to this. Perfect. The Thrifting Lounge. What is happening? It's a rainy day over here in Connecticut. It's been raining all day today. It's probably about probably about 50 degrees. Really looking forward to the warm weather and you know the sunshine. Been biking a lot lately. Been uh, hitting a few trails, going hiking, but really looking forward to the warm weather because oh, I'm not a big fan of the cold weather. All right, I'm gonna give it one more minute and then we're gonna get started into this uh, little education session. If you guys like these videos, make sure to uh, hit that like button. Let me know that you appreciate these videos and you want more. Uh, that's the best way that I can gauge, you know, if you guys are interested in this type of stuff. So make sure that you uh, hit that like button. Let me know. Uh, leave a comment if you like this type of video as well. Usually I just like pre-record these videos and edit them up a little bit and put them on a YouTube channel. But if I could do it live and I could interact with you folks and answer questions, that'll be even better. Let's see if there's any comments. Sounds good and audio complete. Jim Dittmeyer, how's it going, man? All right, so we're going to get into this in a minute. Um, I do want to let you folks know, if uh, if you haven't seen my latest video, be sure to check it out. It's a 10,000 subscriber contest, and I'm giving away my first guide, 101 Killer Clothing Brands. I'm giving away my program, Blazing Profits. That's not currently out yet, but it will be out um, the latest July, July 1st, but it might be out a little sooner than that. So um, definitely check that out. And also I'm going to be giving away a box of clothing, profitable clothes that you know you could sell, you could keep. But uh, yeah, definitely check out my latest 10,000 subscriber contest and uh, give yourself a shot at winning. Let's see how many people we got in the room. We've got 11 viewers. All right, so we're going to get started with uh, looking at some sold listings. So the first thing I like to do when I'm uh, going through the sold listings, one moment. The first thing I like to do is select the category that I'm searching for that I really want to nail down and study. And I decided to go under men's, men's clothing and I went under sweaters. And the next thing I like to do as well is go under condition and choose pre-owned because a lot of the items that I'm picking up from thrift stores which is or yard sales, which are like my primary ways of collecting inventory, most of the stuff is pre-owned. So that's the stuff that I like to research. And obviously I am going to find brand new tag stuff in the stores. It does happen, and if you guys checked out my uh, one of my latest haul videos, um, not the latest one, but the one before it, you saw firsthand how many new tag items I ha I had found. I had a Hugo Boss one, a Penguin one, a Versace. So new new stuff is out there, but most of the stuff is pre-owned. So that's really what I want to set it to. So so I'm really getting acquainted with the uh, pre-owned prices, and I usually like to click U.S. only. You don't have to. But sometimes the currencies will be a little weird, and it's hard to figure out what the prices are. Let's see. And then you click under sold listings. 
If you click under completed listings, it's going to show you items that have sold and have not sold as well. But for this example, I'm just going to go into sold listings because I just want to see what's selling. Let me check the comments real quick, see if we have any questions, and we will get started. There's got to be an easier way for me to check the comments. I know Google, Google has some type of comment system, but I'm just not sure how it works. Jack, Jack Tripper, what is going on? Audio is good and can see the screen. Excellent. Silver Taco, cheers from Canada. I have a great advantage in finding a new Canadian brands. I find Tilly and Durables multiple times a week. Yeah, that's a, definitely a really good brand to look out for. I picked that brand up in terms of I picked up a blazer. I picked up women's and men's blazers uh, in that brand. I picked up they kind of have like travel or slash safari shirts, really nice with a bunch of pockets. Those do well. But yeah, a really good brand. I'm sure you find a lot of, uh, what's that brand called, Coogee, like the Cosby sweaters. I, I believe that's a Canadian brand. Or actually, I think that's Australian. What am I thinking of? Tundra. Tundra is a Canadian brand, I believe. Definitely a good sweater. But all right, let's get into it. Let's check out some things. What do we got here? Two vintage, limited edition, Pataloha, Patagonia, Hawaiian button-down shirts. Let's see what this is. Looks like it was a best offer accepted. It was at 75 bucks. Yeah, so two nice short sleeve button front shirts, floral, floral design. I don't think I've ever heard of this brand before. Let me get in here see what this is all about. Make the screen a little smaller. So the brand, oh, this is, so this is Patagonia, but it looks like it's the, like the Hawaiian version. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Have you guys ever seen that? That looks interesting. So if you ever see a line going through the price, that means they took a best offer. And if you want to find what the best offer actually went for, you go under the, uh, the print section. And you hit that, and it'll show you. It looks like they took a best offer for 35, which seems to be pretty low. If it's a if it's a side brand of Patagonia, something like that, I think it could have went for a lot more. But still, maybe they only paid a dollar or two. Not bad. Let me know if you ever if you ever heard of that brand before. That's interesting. Looks like they were both size large, limited edition. So maybe it's something that's rare. 24 pit to pit. It's kind of like an extra large. Yeah, nice item right there. Keep your eye out for that. We got here a vintage polo, Ralph Lauren hand knit, alpaca blend, cable knit sweater. Yeah, those things do really well. I found a few of these before, and um, if you find it in a Ralph Lauren polo brand, you're definitely going to make some good cash. Hand knit. Keep your eye out for that type of stuff. 90 buckaroos. Sweet. I'm trying to see what the material was. So alpaca and cotton. Yeah, those fisherman sweaters definitely do well. Let's see what's going on in the comment section. Let's see if anybody ever heard of that Pataloha. Tate Tuttle is laughing at me for something. I've sold Pataloha from Patagonia, a good profit. Yeah, anything that's Patagonia or associated with Patagonia, I'm sure it does really well. Uh, it's one of my favorite brands. Let's see what do we got here? Another Ralph Lauren polo item. I don't know if this is a sweater. I guess it's a pullover sweater. Two extra large, tall. Can't beat that big and tall stuff. Big pony. If you've got a name attached to the uh, the Ralph Lauren stuff, like if it says Italy or France or Brazil, you'll see a lot. Those things do really well, especially if it has like patches on it. That's like jackpot. This went for forty bucks plus. Six fifteen to ship. Definitely a nice item right there. RL 2011 Ocean Challenges. So it looks like this was $187 new in the store. Wow. Yeah, this Ralph Lauren stuff is definitely really expensive in the store. Like even if you get like a polo shirt, a lot of them are like at least $50 to $70. Here we got a vintage LL Bean sweater. These things do pretty well. My favorite ones are the ones that are made in like Ireland, or sometimes they'll be made in Norway, with the cool designs. Check these out. Let's see if there's a tag. I don't think there's a tag on here. Thirty-nine fifty-nine. Not bad at all. Let's see how many people we got watching this show right now. Nineteen viewers. I'm about to be heading out soon as well. 
but figured I'd do a little live video, a little education. If there's anything you want me to study as well, like I'm in sweaters right now, but if you guys want me to look at some dress pants, or you want me to look at some suits, or you want me to look at some jackets, or whatever you want me to look at, leave me a comment below, but right now I'm just going through some sweaters. I'm going to try to find something I've never seen before. This looks like something. A Mac Allen. Never heard of that before. Looks like it was sold at Nordstrom for $525. 100% cashmere. Cashmere is freaking awesome. Let's see. Let's see if I can find a tag here. What do we got? Won't click for some reason. Oh, here we go. There's the tag. Mac Allen. Made in Scotland. 100%. Pure cashmere, two extra large, two hundred dollars, twenty-three bids. Wow, I've got to, I've got to save this um, brand. I usually save the brands. Uh, if I, if I've never heard of it, I'll save it in Word. And I've got like a list of a whole bunch of brands that are uh, kind of like things that I want to look out for. So I definitely suggest you do the same thing as well. It's crazy. Like I'll, I'll study the completed listings like really often, like three, four, or five times a week. Sometimes, depending on on how motiva motivated I am, but it's crazy because I, I'm always finding new brands that I've never heard of. Here we got something. Let's see what this is. Possum fur. A possum fur sweater. Wow. That looks crazy. 33 bucks. Let's see if we got a tag on here. What's the brand? Mer Merino Mink. Never heard of that either. I'm going to save that brand as well. There are so many clothing brands out there. It is ridiculous. All right. Let's see what else we got here. Hello? Yeah, I do. yeah, I do. I'll give it to you in a few, all right? All right, thanks. Yeah, I'll talk to you later. Sorry about that, guys. All right, let's get moving on this. So that was another new brand. Let's see if I can find What's this right here? Torino 2006 U.S. Olympics. Half-sip cotton pullover sweater. Hmm, that looks interesting. $31. Hmm, I don't really know much about that. Let's see if we could find a tag in here. All right, so it looks like it was made by, I guess this is association to the Olympics USA. Huh, that looks interesting. If anybody knows anything about that, let me know. Torino 2006 US Olympics. Probably pronouncing it wrong. Let's see what's going on in the comments section. See what people are saying. Shout some people out. Appreciate you watching right now. We've got 26 people watching. I know this isn't the most exciting thing in the world, but I mean, this is what I do. I just scan the sold listings, so I figured I'd bring you along on the exciting journey. I have a question, Rakin. I'm from Detroit. This is from Jen, Jim Dittmeyer. I'm sure I'm pronouncing that name wrong. I'm from Detroit, and I hardly see the brands that you and that are in your book. Great book, by the way. Thank you. So I buy like Polo and Ralph Lauren and such, but usually the current things, which are high price at at my Salvation Army, but I do find at another Goodwill place I go to find them cheap. Now my question is, do I sell them separately? Is it wise to put them together and sell them? Usually I sell t-shirts every day, but very slow. Well, first off, depends where you live in the country. Like certain items, like for, for example, like I sometimes I find, I find a lot of Pendletons over here and Territory Ahead and um, I'll just say Ermini Gildo Zegnas. And then maybe someone who lives in Las Vegas, they never find those items. And then, on the, other, on the other hand, maybe they find brands over there all the time that I don't find. So it really depends on your location. Another thing to consider is how often are you going out? Because I tell you right now, if you're only going out once a week, you're not going to find a lot of the brands. You gotta, There's so many brands out there. There's so many different brands. Like There's hundreds, there's thousands of brands. So there's definitely stuff out there. It's just a matter of what you're going to find.
or should we sell them separately? Um, I'm not sure if that was your question, but um, it really depends. I lot things together once in a while. Um, when you do lot things together, the the overall price is going to go down. So let's say you could sell a Pendleton shirt for twenty, or or yeah, let's just say twenty, whatever. Even though you could get more, let's say you could sell a Pendleton shirt for twenty bucks. But if you lot them together, you're probably only going to get a fifteen dollar average. Most of the time, the average for the shirt is going to go down if you lot them together. Jack Tripper, what about ties? Yeah, that's definitely something we could look into as well. I'm trying to learn a lot more. Mr. Retro, Josh in the house. Man, he is an awesome hustler. If you guys aren't subscribed to him, check him out. Mr. Retro Josh, great kid. And uh, I forget how old he, old he is. I know. I think you're, I don't know, didn't you just get your license? But, man, you are killing it with the video games, the Amazon. Shout out to Josh. He is an awesome guy right there. See what we got right here. The thrifting lounge, mine sold for 45, two extra large. Yeah, that big stuff sells well. The thrifting lounge, Bolo. I can't pronounce that. Carrig, Don. I've heard of that brand. I think I've actually sold it before. Let's go back into the sold listings. Here we go. Here's a Kuji sweater. This is an Australian brand, I believe. I know I said Canadian before. Pretty sure it's an Australian brand, but these things do really well, especially the ones with like the really bright colors. You get up to 150 to 200, 200 bucks a pop, and uh, they're definitely uh, in demand. I found a, a few of them before. Let's see, this one went for 51. These things are heavy too; they are really heavy. If you ever found one, Let's see cotton crew neck sweater, Kuji. Yep, Australia. Keep your eye out for that Kuji stuff. It does really well. Even the, uh, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it right, Kugi, Kuji, I think it's Kuji. Even the uh, the button front shirts or the polo shirts, sometimes you'll find them in like four or five. I found a six extra large before, and they'll sell pretty well. So keep your eye out for that stuff. Oh, here's like another Kuji style sweater. The brand is Bergatti. I don't think I've ever heard of that either. Let's take a look at the tag. That's a cool item, though. Look at that. Nope, never heard of that brand. I gotta write that down as well. Ber Bergatti? <laughs> I don't know. Ah, <laughs> oh, so many brands out there. So many brands. If you're going out to the thrift store and you're telling and you're saying that you can't find items and you're coming up with excuses, I'm telling you right now, educate yourself more. Because, like, just for example, I've been studying the sold listings for over a year now, coming on two years. That's, like, it's one of the main things I do, and I'm still finding items that I've never found before, brands, styles, and, like I always say, like I always say, sometimes you got to look past the brand, because all because of brand, maybe Gap, maybe, or Stafford, people say, oh, that brand doesn't sell. That's not necessarily true. Even the worst brands out there, like Morona. There's still items in that brand that could sell for some good money if you find the right types of items. Maybe you find that the polo shirts in the Gap brand don't sell really well, but if you find the denim pearl snap shirts in the Gap brand, they do sell well. So that's just one example looking past the brand. This is a cool item though, 45 bucks. Love that color and love that design. Mark Jacobs. This looks like a women's. Real nice cardigan. I am under the men's section though, so it must be a men's. Nice item right there. Looks like it has the uh, the leather buttons. Those are a very nice selling point. Fifty-seven sixty-six. I don't think I've ever sold this brand before. I've heard of it though. Take a look at the tag. There you go. So it looks like it's wool. It's got the nice elbow patches. Size extra small. Wow, that is tiny. What are the measurements on that? See, cross chest, 23 inches. That's more like a large. Hmm. All right, Mark Jacobs. How many people are watching right now? I know this isn't very entertaining. 31 people. Come on, guys. You got something better to do on a Friday night than, than watching me scan the completed listings? I'm just kidding. Let me know in the comments, too. What are you guys up to tonight? Do you have any fun plans going out to dinner, going to watch a movie? Maybe you're going to meet up with some friends. I'm going to be meeting up with a buddy after. We're going to be going out for some dinner, catching a live band. All right. Let's see. Where am I? 
All right, let's keep looking. Here's another Kuji sweater. Here's a really high-end brand. The, the brand is Rag and Bone. Looks like it's by Neiman Marcus. Shawl cardigan sweater, really nice. Here's a brand. I'm not sure if I've ever heard, heard of this brand either. Belvedere, Italian brand, merino wool and cashmere heavy. That's that's interesting. $34.99. Eight bucks to ship. Let's check that out. Definitely a nice material, a nice look to it. The uh, seller did a really good job of taking the pictures. They got the mannequin, they got the jeans and everything. From Pennsylvania. There we go. Bel Belvedere. Hmm. Put that on my list right now as well. And I got a big list of items. I got a lot of different brands. So some of these brands, I already have them on my list. And uh, what I'll usually do is I'll take this list when I'm done and I'll go back into the sold listings and like type in an individual brand. Like maybe I'll copy this and paste it into the sold listings and really check out all the items that are selling and start to you know differentiate between the different styles that are popular and the styles that aren't as popular. Like I said with that Gap example, like the polo shirts won't necessarily do that well. But the pearl snap denim shirts will do well. I know the leather jackets will do well. Some of the thicker sweaters will do well. So I'll take this list and I'll go back into the sold listings. And may maybe not tonight, but over time, you know, when I when I have a few minutes to kill, I'll, I'll kind of look at it. Because believe it or not, you could find a brand, like maybe this brand Belvedere. You'll, you'll study it. You'll research it. You know, you'll go back into sold listings and really get an idea of what's selling. And maybe you won't even find this brand for three months, six months, nine months. But then maybe 12 months down the road, you'll be at a thrift store and you'll find 10 of these things at the same thrift store. And if you hadn't already studied up, there's a chance that you wouldn't have bought these things. So maybe you'll see that brand and you'll say to yourself, wait a minute, I think I researched that brand. And just that little light going off will give you the signal to go into your phone or your or go on your computer or whatever you got, your tablet, if you're carrying a tablet with you, and uh, just do some research and maybe you'll buy it. So... That's the key. It's kind of like putting future money in your pocket when you're scanning these sold listings. Let's go into the comments, see what's going on. And if, uh, like I said before, if you're just tuning in, if you like these videos, if you like me uh, sharing my screen with you and researching, hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Let me know that you like these videos, and I'll definitely keep doing more. If you don't like them, I'll stick to the normal videos and you know the short, compact videos. But uh, like I said, if you enjoy these videos, Smash that like button. Definitely appreciate it, and it'll let me know to keep making these videos. We got Jay Zepp in the house. Thanks, Steve, for the live video. Hey, man, I appreciate appreciate it, Jay, stopping by and uh, you know checking out the live video. Patrick Lester, Steve, for those of us who purchased 101 Killer Clothing Brands, will you be providing an updated list and maybe increasing it to 150? Um, I don't know about an updated list, but in the, probably down the road, maybe a year from now, maybe I'll come out with another uh, another guide or something with, with more brands. Um, but most of the brands that I speak on are pretty timeless. These brands are in high demand. They're gonna be they're gonna be profitable brands for years to come. But like I said, I probably got another two or three hundred brands that I'm constantly on the lookout for and uh, proven brands. So maybe down the road, like I said. I'll come out with another guide, but like I like right now, I already have that one guide I came out with three months ago, and I've got another program coming out. So I'm going to be taking a break for a while. I'm really concentrating on the business, um, but you know, I'll be making more videos like this and helping you guys to um, you know educate yourself. That's key, you know. These like especially the 101 Killer Clothing Brands book, it'll fast track your success a lot. You know, give you a lot of ideas. But even without it, you can still make a lot of money because, you know, you just got to educate yourself. It just takes a lot of time to, you know, find the brands and then sit down and experiment with them and see what works. But, you know, education is key regardless of how you do it. Let's see who else we got in here. Drazzle690, love your videos. I'm a huge fan of your work. Hey, thanks so much. You know, I'm just an average guy just sharing my journey, um, you know. I've got a good amount of knowledge, but there's a lot of people out there who know a lot more than me. And uh, if I was to let, take a look at myself in terms of what I know with clothing, one out of a hundred, hundred know I know everything, and one I know nothing, I'd say I'm about a twenty out of a hundred because there's that much to know. There is so much to know, and uh, you know, the more I educate myself, the more opportunities I find. Like I was saying the other day, when I had first gotten started on eBay and selling clothes. I remember just going into thrift stores, and I had two brands in my mind that I was looking for. 
One was Pendleton, and the other one was Territory Ahead. If I walked into the thrift store and I couldn't find them, I would leave the store. But then as time went on, I added another brand to my mind, another brand, another brand, and now I've got three, four, five, six hundred brands probably I'm looking for. Who knows? There's so many of them out there, but at least a solid two to three hundred brands that I'm looking for. And uh, as you go on too, you're going to move from different areas. Like maybe you'll start off with, like for me, I started with dress shirts, then I moved on to jackets, then athletic gear. I moved on to jeans, then dress pants, then casual pants, then shorts, then shoes, then ties. And, you know, it's constantly, you're kind of like moving from, you know, place to place learning. But let's, uh, let's get on with another item here. Trying to figure out what I'm doing. All right, 35 viewers in the room. That is cool. See, this is a brand that, well, actually, this is Adidas, but this brand right here, Yohi Yamamoto, <laughs> I'm horrible at pronouncing names, obviously. Um, that's a crazy brand right there that really does well. I think it's a Japanese brand, but I think this is a, what, are, what do we even have here? Looks like it's a cardigan sweater, Y3. I'm not sure what that stands for. Here we go. I'm trying to figure out. They have two names. They have Adidas, and then they have the Yohi Yamamoto. So I'm not sure what brand this is. Let's see if there's a tag anywhere. Yeah, I'm not really sure what this is. Let's move on to another item. Yeah, see, this is a nice Ralph Lauren polo sweater. I've sold one of these before. Um, nice little sweater. It's got a cool little design to it. The V-neck. Looks like it's a tri blend, and the tri blend is pretty much three blends of uh, material. So you got the cotton, the linen, the cashmere. Just a nice vintage. Well, I don't know if it's vintage. It looks like it's maybe 15, 20 years old, but I could be wrong. Um, nice sweater, like I said, tri blend. 30 bucks. I, pl I probably would have shot for more around 50 or 60, but 30 is probably an acceptable price. Robert Graham, awesome brand. Here's a brand, Brunello Susanelli. I think that's an Italian brand, definitely high end. Look at this. We got a John W. Nordstrom, 100% cashmere. Love that cashmere, sells awesome. Cashmere is definitely one of those materials where it's like, just pick it up regardless of what it is. Even the worst brands seem to sell with cashmere with sweaters. But it's hard to find them in good condition. You're going to notice, especially when you're looking through the sweaters, a lot of the cashmere stuff is going to have a lot of rips in it. Um, or not rips, like holes, and also a lot of like pilling, and you'll see that the little little bundles of the material are coming off it. I think it's called pilling, um, so I usually stay away from that. Finding a cashmere item that's in good condition at a thrift store is sometimes difficult. You could tell that a lot of the cashmere stuff at the thrift store, it's been, it hasn't been dry cleaned. They wash it the wrong way, and it's just not in the greatest condition. 30 bucks plus $6 to ship. Pretty cool item right there. And again, guys, if you want me to um, go into another area other than sweaters, let me know in the comments, and I'll definitely go over there. Wow, what is this? Here's a brand, Gavinci. Look at that. That is beautiful. It's got the flowers at the bottom. I mean, that's a cool little piece right there. Would you guys pick this up if you've seen it? It's got the crew neck, nice sweater, floral design, nice tag. Got the number 17 on back, whatever that stands for. Excellent condition. 212 bucks. Wow. Definitely look out for that. I'll try to find a brand I've never heard of. Huh, what's this? I don't know if I've ever heard of this. Blue Marine? I'm going to have to add that to the list. Check that out. Let's take a look at the tag. Blue Marine, you you almost put that on the list. If you guys want this list after when I'm done, hit me up on um on my Facebook over at Rake and Profit. I'll send it over to you. Just uh, shoot me a private message, or maybe I'll even post it up on the, on my page. We'll see. See if I get to it. But it looks like this is 100% cotton, made in Italy. That's always a really nice place to buy items from. Uh, cable knit, thirty-eight fifty. Nice crew neck to it. Nice pictures too. Well, I mean, half decent. I, they probably could have used a little more lighting, but still, a 
good picture. Picture's a lot better than some of mine. Yeah, it's actually pretty good. Top rated seller. Awesome. New brand in the memory banks right there. Let's see what's going on in the comments section. Yo, Raken, you need to... FT Ideas, what's going on, man? Yo, Raken, you need to set up these rooms so there's a live chat feed. I know, I need to figure out how to do that because I was watching... I'm not sure if you guys follow Glenn and Cameron on YouTube. He's an awesome guy, um, really smart. He's uh, He's got a lot of different courses out as well. Um, but I know that I was watching one of his live um, videos the other day, and he, he, kept, he kept referring to the Google chat. So I'm not sure if I have to go through the... Um, the Google Plus somehow, and there's a chat in there. I'm not sure. If anybody knows how that works, uh, leave a comment let me know because I'd love to be able to interact with you guys easier than having to you know, go back to the YouTube page and refresh it. It's kind of a pain in the butt. Louis the Seller, I'm going to have some sex in a couple of hours. Hey, you asked. Wow. No comment. We got Do It Keen. You all know the same. It's a very famous Runway brand. Yes, it's a super designer brand like Runway brand. Awesome. Sam Zaki, I cannot see the video. Are you guys live? We're actually doing a screen share. So what I'm showing you, what you're going to see whatever I click on. So if I click on Word, you're going to see Word where I'm accumulating a list. If I click on eBay, you're going to see that. So that's what the screen share is all about. <clears throat> Alright, let's see what other comments are coming through. Shout some people out. If you want to get shouted out, leave a comment. Let me know. Jay Zepsy j said, Josh, you need to do some videos. Yeah, he's got to get in there, man. you got some awesome content to share. So we're taco raking. I'm trying out something new, trying to research men's dress shoes. Yeah, there's a lot of money to be made with dress shoes, a lot. I'll give you one brand right now that does really well, Allen Edmonds. Awesome brand right there. I even pick up the belts and the um, – what else do I pick up in that brand? The shoes, of course. Something else I was picking up, but that was an awesome brand. <clears throat> Prime Find, what is happening? I just found a Givenchy tracksuit the other day at my local thrift store for 12 bucks. Yeah, I know some of those tracksuits can do well. I actually came across one probably a few months ago out of Savers, and I ended up passing it up. Um, I think it had a rip in it. Tate Tuttle said, found a Gap Merino wool sweater and a George 100% cashmere sweater as well for a dollar a piece last Saturday. Worth it? Absolutely. Um, the Gap sweater, I mean, there's a lot of them out there, so I'm sure it'll sell, but I think the uh, the George cashmere sweater will, will probably do a lot better. I actually found one recently as well, and I think it's sold. I think it's sold for like 20 <laughs> McLean going to get trashed tonight. Hey, you better not be drinking and driving, my friend. And Vic, I need to be listing, but here I am watching your videos yet once again. How many items do you list per day? Um, it really depends. Recently, I've been kind of slacking because I've been working on my uh, Amazon Kindle business. I've been working on a lot on Craigslist. I've been doing some other Amazon stuff and obviously working on the Blazing Profits program. Um, so I've been working on a quite a, a lot of other things. So my time's kind of been limited over here, but I've been probably banging out on average anywhere between... 20 to 100 items a week. Um, I do have an employee working for me slash friend who I pretty much drop all my clothes off at his house and I got the backdrop over there, the mannequin and all the, the camera equipment and I drop all my items off and he, he takes all the pictures and um, I drop off a bunch of listing templates as well and he fills them all out and I just pretty much pick them all back up and uh, he does everything besides listing the items, so I pick up all the pieces of paper, I bring them home, upload the pictures, and kind of just transfer the information into the listing uh, on eBay and put it through. So it saves me some time. Obviously, I have to pay them. I pay them a fixed price per item, but um, <clears throat> i got to remember to bring up some water when I do these live hangouts because I cannot talk. All right, I think I just found some water. <sighs> that was good. But yeah, usually between 20 and 100. If I'm really pushing hard, once I get this Blazing Profits program out <clears throat> and I get a few other things in line, I'll probably get back to the 100 listings per um, per week mark. That's pretty much my sweet spot. All right, let's go back into the sweaters, see what else we could find. Here's another brand. I don't know if I've ever heard of this. Ken, Ken Ross? 
large red cashmere sweater, lightweight V neck, thirty four ninety nine. Item location, West Palm Beach. It's beautiful over there. My grandparents live in Boynton Beach. Should be visiting soon. 100% cashmere. This is a lightweight vest. I notice other Kinross sweaters on eBay are also sized larger than normal. A 40 inch, 8 inch chest is typically a large in the USA. Hmm. Wow. That's a big item right there. I got to put that bank, I got to put that list in my memory bank as well. See if I can copy this. So I've already found, I've only been doing this for what, 20 minutes or so? I've already found one, two, three, four, five, six new brands. So uh, I'll definitely research more of these. Let's see if I can get these the same font. All right. <clears throat> so that's another sweater, sweater vest to look for. Again, cashmere, another one of those materials where it's like, pick it up. What do we got here? A Psycho Bunny. Wow. Never met a Psycho Bunny before. Wool. V-neck size large. <laughs> Look at that logo. That is a Psycho Bunny right there. You do not want to mess with that bunny. All right. Let's see if we can see the tag. Psycho Bunny. What the heck is that? That's an awesome name right there. That's another brand I've got to uh, look up. I've never heard of that. Psycho Bunny. Who comes up with these names? All right. <clears throat> so that's a wool knit sweater, V-neck. Looks like it's a London brand too, London, New York. Cool, cool, cool. Have you guys ever heard of Psycho Bunny? That's a new one to me. Here's this uh, North Face. Look at this sweater. That's cool. Never seen anything in the North Face brand with that style. Wow. That's definitely old. I, that looks like it's from the 90s or something because I, I've never seen anything like that before. I'm sure you guys all heard of the brand North Face, of course. We're all probably wearing something that's North Face right now. $39.99, I probably would have went a little higher just because it's so unique. Um, when it comes to those items that are unique and different and just a little weird, I always like to price them a little higher because there's not a lot of supply. And although there's not a lot of demand, if there's somebody who's looking for that item and there's not a lot of options and you're the only guy, you can pretty much bring in any price that you want. Um, but obviously, I'd have to do some more research. Maybe there's a lot of these for, for sale, but I doubt it. Thirty-one people watching right now. Cool, cool. Let's see what people are saying in the comments. Shout some more people out. Hopefully, you guys are learning a few things. I, I've already learned, like I said, six or seven new brands right now. Yeah, I gotta like that. You set it up through the video manager. He's talking about the uh, the Google chat, I believe, on YouTube. Then go to live events on the left, and then start a live event. That is all you have to do. Huh? I'll look into that. Definitely would like to um, incorporate more of a, you know, easier communication between me and you guys. <clears throat> Do it, Keen. I had the lady message me today that her son didn't fit in the size seven polo shirt that she bought for me, and it is item not as described because he always fits in seven polo shirts, and she wants her money back. I didn't want her to get aggravated. It's a negative comment and said I will refund upon return. I mean, yeah, that's it's really what you got to do. I'm curious. Let me know. Did you did you include the measurements? I'm not sure if you said you did or not. Um, I'm sure you did, but that actually happened to me the other day too. I sold a, what was it? I think it was a Lacoste shirt. I've got it right next to me actually. It was a, I'm not sure what size it was. Let's just say it was a size six Lacoste shirt, which is a European size for, I believe, a large. And um, the person ended up contacting me and said, you know, I always fit into a size six. This is too small. And what I really wanted to say was, well, why didn't you reference the measurements, dum dum? <laughs> I'm just kidding, but you can't say that, you know. Um, but I wanted to say, why didn't you reference the measurements? Because I had all the measurements there, and they're telling me it doesn't fit. Well, that's why all the measurements are there. You know, pre-owned items they could fit differently based on age, based on location of manufacturer, um, just based on if you washed it a lot. So I mean, I'm curious to know if you if you put the measurements in, but it happens once in a while. Like I keep speaking on this returns. It's part of the business. You got to get your psychology right. It's gonna happen. 
Um, returns are going to come in, especially with clothing. People aren't going to... Uh, maybe the color isn't exactly what it matched on the pictures because your contrast was off. Maybe it was a little too small or too big. Maybe you missed the stain. I mean, it happens with clothing, so sorry to hear that. Do it keen. Who did it? 99 in the house. Late, but I caught you live. Glad to have you here. The Nashville Music Man. Can you do a video on listing templates? Hit me up. I'll give you my listing template. Or just go onto my uh, eBay. It's Steve R A A eight, and um, you can pretty much just take my listing. Obviously, my template. Just obviously delete the, the the details that are relevant to my store and put in your own. Louis the Seller Raken sport jerseys are very profitable. Are you into them? Absolutely. You got to find the right team, the right player. But um, those things are definitely in demand. The Nashville Music Man. Man, I wish I knew you were doing this. I'm the one that requested it. Yeah, this was kind of just a spur of the moment. Just I was I was just bored, you know. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna have a live hangout and just help some people out. Okay, Yogi. Yogi Yamamoto, I guess that's how you pronounce it. It's a Japanese fashion designer. A lot of times the designer name will make the sale if you catch the right ones. Absolutely. Prime find. I live in Miami Beach. Lots and lots of designer brands in our thrift stores. Yeah, I was just in Miami, um, I think it was two years ago. Was over on um, what what street was it? I think it was Sunset Boulevard. Psycho Bunny is sold at Nord Nordstrom's. Cool. I didn't even know. L Philly just tuning in. How are you? So Mr. Retro Josh, okay, I know I knew he was young, 16 years old. This guy has been hustling, making money. So if you're listening right now and you're thinking, you know, can I do this? Is it possible? Look at Josh. He's 16 and he is kicking butt right now. But you know what? Josh is a really smart guy. But I'll tell you right now, you don't have to be super smart to do this. You don't have to be necessarily the quickest person on your feet. You just got to... You know, you just got to absorb the information and take small little steps, and you can definitely do it. But uh, Mitchell, Mr. Retro Josh, 16, he said, appreciate it, man. I sold a Nat Nass today for 23 paid about 3 and some change. Probably to ship it. Wouldn't have known to buy it if it wasn't for your book. Yeah, I appreciate it. Nat Nass is one of those brands where it's kind of like Patagonia or Vineyard Vines or um, kind of like those Ermini Gildo Zagna. You just pick them up because they definitely sell well. <clears throat> Drowsel 690 Raken, I have a shirt listed on eBay that has 45 views with two watchers. The shirt isn't good. The shirt is listed for good till canceled, but I can't get a bid or purchase. Should I lower the price a bit or stick it out? Um, depends how long you have had it listed for. If it's only been listed for like a few weeks or a month, just let it sit a little longer. If you got 45 views and two watchers, I mean, there's definitely a market for it. People are interested in it. Uh, it really depends on the item, though. It depends what the sold listings are looking like. If a lot of these things are selling at your target price, wait it out. But if you're kind of stretched out a bit, then um, excuse me, then uh, you might want to bring the price down a little bit. But it's up to you. Experiment. Don't be scared, guys, to raise the price or lower the price. See what happens. Michelle Anderson, kick my butt and tell me to concentrate on clothing and knock off other stuff. I'm best at clothing, but I have a hard time. Resisting board games and video games and other random stuff. Yeah, I hear you. There's so much stuff out there. It's hard to uh, stick to one thing at at once. All right, let's get back into the items for sale. You know what? Let's move on to some ties. I really wanna. I really wanna do some research on some ties right now. So we got a few new brands for sweaters. So I'm back in the men's clothing section. Let's find ties. Where are they? I think they're under accessories. Alright, I don't know where to find it, but I'll find it this way. Yeah, it's under men's accessories. So let's check out some ties, see what's going on here. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is go into pre-owned because most of the items are going to be pre-owned. Then I'm going to set the price because I don't want to be wasting my time looking at items that only sell them for five or ten bucks. So I'm going to set my minimum price to let's say twenty bucks. So anything that pops up is going to be twenty dollars or more. And then let's go under 
sold listings. I do I do completed listings once in a while too, just to get a feel for the sell through rates. But for this example, let's just do sold, just to see what's selling. Let's see what we got going on here. Thirty two people watching. Awesome. Glad people are sticking around. I know this isn't that exciting. Um, usually I try to make the videos a little more entertaining and a little more upbeat, but I'm kind of just kicking back right now, relaxing, you know, just enjoying the Friday night and um, just figured I would, you know, take you along on a little education journey. So we were looking at sweaters for about the first, let's see how long has this video been? Wow, it's already 45 minutes. We were looking at sweaters for the first 45 minutes and uh, found some brands, if you're just tuning in, I found some new brands that I'd never heard of before, Mac Allen, Allen. Uh, Merino Mink, Bergatti, Belvedere, Blue Marine, Ken Ross, and Psycho Bunny. So definitely jot those things down if you uh, got a minute and pause this video. But now we're moving on to some sweaters, and I'm losing my voice, so I apologize for that. Look at this. We got a Ralph Lauren polo bear. We got the bears on it with the flag tie. 59 bucks. That is crazy. Anything Ralph Lauren polo with a bear is just, like, amazing. It sells really fast and it's really high demand. I mean, think about it, especially if you have like the Wayne Pays. And if you're not sure what the Wayne Pays are, it's pretty much the um, for the Goodwill company. They have these little outlet stores where you pretty much weigh an item and you pay a certain price based on the weight. And that can usually range between. Oh, I've only been to one. I went with Pick and Profits for the first time. It was like an hour away from me, but I went to one and I think it was between a dollar, dollar fifty per pound. Maybe less. Maybe it was thirty cents. I don't even remember. But the Wayne page, you get stuff really cheap. But imagine picking this up for forty or fifty cents or less because a tie barely weighs anything and selling it for fifty nine. It's definitely possible. Awesome item right there. Ralph Lauren Polo, the Bears. Awesome item. And let me know in the comments, guys. Um <clears throat> do you have any tips for selling ties? Because when it comes to ties, honestly, I'm like such an amateur. I have sold a few. I've sold an, a Hugo Boss. I sold a uh, I actually shipped one out today, a Robert Talbot tie. But besides that, I really haven't sold many ties. Um, I have educated myself on them a little bit, but I haven't really been looking that much because, you know, there's so many things to look for that I have more knowledge on, like jackets and, uh, you know, dress shirts and suits and blazers and sport coats. So, I mean, there's always something to look for, but like I said, I'm not an expert. So any tips you guys have for ties, any brands, definitely let me know. <clears throat> Looks like we got a Prada silk tie right there. That's all about the brand. Gucci, that's the brand right there. Really high-end brand. Here's a new brand I haven't heard of. Kenzo. $25.49. 19 bids. Holy moly. All right, so I didn't set the item location, so this actually is from Italy, I believe. Really cool design. Looks like a floral design to it. Really nice. Let me uh, copy this brand. Cannot spell for my life. All right, <clears throat> what do we got here? This was Kenzo, so I'm gonna definitely look at that more. And if you're just tuning in, pretty much when I'm when I'm scanning the sold listings, I'm looking for items that not only items that I haven't found, but items just new items in general. It could be a new style, it could be a new size, a new material. So anything that I find intriguing, interesting for future reference, I'll definitely jot it jot it down, take a note, just so I can research it more. But this is an interesting brand. I'll have to look more into it. Kenzo. Let me check the comments, see what you guys have to say about ties. Maybe you guys got some advice we could share on the uh, the show. <clears throat> Prime Fine said, are the Wayne Pays worth going for clothing? Absolutely. Like I said, I only have one. That's uh, in Connecticut, I believe, only one, and it's like an hour away, so I like rarely ever go because it's just so out of the way. But uh, I did go with Pickin' Profits, and there was a lot of stuff there. I, I showed up late, so a lot of the good stuff was snagged up. But just think about it. I mean, over in my stores, you're paying between anywhere between, I don't know, 2 to 
upwards of twenty dollars per items, even more for like the blazers and suits and stuff. But if you go to the Wayne Pays and you get things for fifty to a dollar per pound, fifty cents to a dollar per pound, or even a dollar fifty per pound, I mean you can still make out like a bandit. Jim says Friday night, me, Colt forty five, cigars and eBay. Hey, it sounds like a pretty fun night. Jack Tripper, what about ties? We are getting into ties right now. L. Philly started at 14 with selling bicycles, now in a hustling about everything, going into selling clothing, age 19 now, learning from you through all these videos. Yeah, I appreciate it. I learn a lot from you guys as well uh, through the comments, through other videos, through you folks who write blog posts. I mean, so we're always helping each other out. That's key. Everyone's so positive. We're always learning something from, uh, from one another, so that's awesome. Janet says, make sure to post that list. I'll try to remember. Sandra Rick said, greetings from Louisiana. That was a horrible accent. Um, let's see what is happening in here. Looks like that's all that's going on. Again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to figure out the, uh, the, the chat system next time so we can interact better so I don't have to be scrolling through all these comments. It loves lots. I like that name. I agree with you, Steve. I've seen even Walmart dresses sell. Walmart, yeah, we all love Walmart. You can hustle anything. It helps to have a well-trained eye. I love you. Keep on doing what you do. You are an awesome person. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. No, you're an awesome person. But yeah, like you said, I mean, anything can sell. Even Walmart stuff could sell. I remember a while back I made a video. I forgot what the brand was, but I, I titled the video, This Shirt is Making Me Hungry, and it was actually a shirt with like burgers and fries on it. And it was like screen printed, so it looks so real. And I know that's a Walmart brand as well. I think they sold it for like ten bucks. And I actually sold it for like twenty, maybe twenty-five, somewhere around there, I think. So anything could sell if you find the right item. And you know how people are. Sometimes they're lazy, so they just want to shop online. They don't want to go out to the store. Let's get into some more ties though. I'm ranting. That's a good brand. I don't know if I can pronounce it. Salvatore Ferragamo. <clears throat> Versace tie. Luigi Borelli. <clears throat> oh, check this out. A Rush Limbaugh tie. Oh, that's interesting. $44.99. Look at the color. Look at the design of that. Wow, that thing is beautiful. Huh. That's cool. That is definitely one of a kind right there. Keep an eye out for that Rush Limbaugh tie. That's in my list. I'm going to do some more research on that. All right. Let's see what else we can find in terms of ties. Dolce & Gabbana, Gucci. Look, we got a Disney tie right here. Fantasia from 2000. Wow, I never would have thought that would have sold. Thanks for looking at this beautiful tie made by Walt Disney, an amazing designer of luxury items. All my ties are offered for sale in great shape. All right. Let's see if they got any more pictures. Yeah, I heard that a lot of the ties with themes on it do pretty well. So keep your eye out for that type of stuff. Fantasia 2000, 23.77. Picked it up for two or three bucks at the thrift store. Ship it off for maybe two dollars and thirty cents. Pay a few fees, make ten, fifteen bucks profit all day long. See, here's another themed uh, tie. It looks like these are what are these? Yellow jackets. Wow, that's a cool little tie right there by Ralph Lauren Polo. Again, the theme. Specific themes could do well. There's people out there who collect things, bees and horses. I know a lot of people are pig collectors of uh, different items. Like my mom, she's obsessed with like anything that's a pig, has a pig on it. She wants to buy it, little coin jars or pieces of clothing. She's obsessed with pigs. So people are out there. They're obsessed with certain animals, certain themes. Hermes Paris, I know that's a high-end brand. Another Versace. Ermini Gildo Zegna tie, another good brand. Ike Pahar. Looks like this is a lot, too. Let's check that out. I sell these dress shirts once in a while, but they seem to be selling slow lately. You want to stick to the stuff that has a cool design to it. it seems like the plain ones just aren't really selling that well. Yeah, 
Here's a Burberry tie, $74.99. Wow. Burberry is one of those brands that sells well, but it seems like the thrift stores, they definitely know this. Everyone knows the brand Burberry, so they kind of you know, put the prices sky high. It's like little diamonds, geometric pattern. I want to find a tie, a, a new brand that I haven't heard of before. I've heard of all these. Hermes, Brooks Brothers, Louis Vuitton, Fasinable. Here's a Robert Talbot, Brooks Brothers. See, this is a brand that I found the other day in a dress shirt. <clears throat> I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, Charvette. But uh, I sold one of these shirts the other day. If it was in good condition, it probably could have got like 50 or 60, but it had a stain in it. It only sold for like 20. But definitely a high-end brand right there. Wow, look at that tie. Who makes this? I'm not even going to tr try to pronounce that. <laughs> oh, I'm going to have to copy this for sure. I've never heard of that. Let's see if we get a picture of the tag in here. So they were selling it for $99.99, and it looks like they took a best offer for... Well, first let's see if there's a picture of the tag. I don't really see a picture. I don't really see the name at all. Let's just assume that that's the name, Vitaliano Pancaldi. Oh yeah, let's see what it sold for. Best offer. You can hit the print button to see the best offer. Sixty bucks. Wow, that's awesome. Let's check that out real quick. Let's see um what these things are selling for. See, I see a few of them that are priced pretty low. Well, this one has twenty eight minutes. It's at twelve fifty. Let's look at the sold listings. Yeah, these things are selling for a lot of money. This is a killer brand right here. Holy moly. 40, 50, 30, 26, 52. Wow. Got to put that brand down. That's a crazy brand. Can't guarantee that you're ever going to find it. But again, like I said before, you put all these brands in your mind. You, you hold on to them. And if you ever come across something, that little signal is going to go off and says, you know what, I think I've studied this before. All right, let's get out of here. That's a good brand to pick up. Looks like the crazier design, the crazier the color, the more it goes for. There's a lot of 11 brands that were put together. A lot of 11 uh, Looney Tunes, 31 bucks. The only way that would probably be worth it for you is, again, if you went to the weigh and pay, you could probably get 11 ties for $2, I'm guessing. They don't even weigh anything. You know, you lock those up, sell them for 30 bucks. Definitely be worth it. We got a Briani tie. Here's another brand I don't think I've ever heard of. Solka. 49 inches. Solka and Company. Hmm. Never heard of that. Definitely look at that later on. See what's going on in the comments section. See if anyone's uh, got any questions. It's so hard to find the comments this way. I got to figure out a, a better way. James, James O Frames. That's crazy. My mom has the biggest pig collection too. She has a whole shelf in her room for her pigs. Yeah, if you in, we should introduce moms. They'll probably be best friends. Master Budano, how do you do with women's blazers? I picked up a, Pendle a Pendleton women's blazer in my local thrift shop for 8 bucks, and I can't sell it. Should I avoid women's blazers? Honestly, I don't really mess with women's clothing that much. Um, I actually picked up a Pendleton blazer like a year ago, and I brought it home, and I realized it was a women's blazer. I didn't realize it at the time, and I put it up for sale for like 40 bucks, and like three months went by. It never sold. I dropped it down to like 20 and then I just kind of forgot about it, and like nine or ten months later, it sold for like ten dollars. So I don't know if it was just the particular style, but it really didn't do that well for me. Again, it really depends sometimes on the color, the design, the material. It could all, you know, play a huge role in how much you get. Let's 
Sandra Rick said, notice that Kinzo is in Italy, may not find find him here. Yeah, exactly. But once in a while, you know, people from Italy, they move over here and vice versa, and, you know, maybe they outgrow things or they want to get rid of their wardrobe or somebody dies, unfortunately, and they donate to the thrift store. That happens all the time. So uh, regardless if it's, you know, produced in a different country or they're more common in different countries, they can still come over here just like, you know, our items go over there. We export them or whatnot or people move. So uh, it's always good to, you know, have these brands, you know, at the tip of your brain. So if you ever find them, I usually go out two or three times a week, Jim says. I sell mostly a lot of Michigan and Michigan State college shirts, but rarely button shirts unless they are bright and colorful. James says, the main thing I've learned with ties is to sell them in lots. Then you could throw in some losers with your winners. Yeah, that's a good tip right there. Hot Halloween props. I love that name. I bought a bag full of vintage ties last night. What is the best way to wash them? Honestly, I have no clue, but if you go to Google, type in how to wash ties, I'm sure you'll get some really good answers. I've never washed a tie before, um, but depending on the material, you're probably going to want to wash them differently, maybe hot or cold water, just depending on the material. Um, like with the wool stuff, I know you never want to use hot water because it's going to mess it up. Usually you got to drop it off with the dry cleaners, but uh, definitely do a Google search. I wish I could help you there. Janet McDaniel said, I'm going to watch your videos on selling games next. What is happening? All right. I'm going to be getting out of here in a few minutes, guys. But let's go uh, back into the ties and look for a few more. i got to be meeting up with a buddy soon. See if we can find a few new brands. Vineyard Vines, that's an awesome brand right there. What do we have here? This looks really cool. Kind of like a mystical Aztec design or something. Not Aztec, but just just looks crazy. 31 bucks. What's the brand right here? Yeah, Tribal Art, Necktie, Outstations. Where's the brand? What do we got here? Is that the brand right there? Oh, Outstations. Hmm. I'll look into that some more. That's interesting. 31 bucks though. I mean, I don't know how much ties are going for in your area. Leave me a comment below. If you guys sell ties or if you've ever seen them for sale at your thrift stores, let me know how much do your ties cost at the thrift store. Over here in Connecticut, which is where I live, they could range anywhere. At Savers, they're getting crazy. At Savers, they could range anywhere from, I'll say $1.99 upwards to $10 a tie. If you go to Salvation Army, I think they're a flat fee of $1.99 and... The Goodwills, I think they are. What are the Goodwills? I think they're. I think they're three dollars flat fee. So you know, sometimes I get them cheap. Sometimes they're more expensive. But for two or three bucks, if you're selling them for thirty dollars, especially considering the, you know, the the how inexpensive it is to ship, there's definitely a lot of profit to be made. So I'm gonna put this brand on this list. All right. Cool, cool. Got a new brand. And this is it, guys. You know, I'm, I'm just researching. There's nothing glamorous. There's nothing sexy or exciting about what I'm doing right now. I'm just I'm just going through the sold listings and just getting new ideas. And, uh, you know, I'm putting myself in a position to get lucky down the road. Some more Ralph Lawrence, another Briani. Cool theme right there. There's a Brooks Brothers watch in the tie section. That's interesting. We got a Hickey Freeman. That's definitely a good brand to focus on for blazers. I love the gold button stuff in terms of the Hickey Freeman stuff. Even the suits, the pinstripes, they do well. Paul Stewart, that's a good brand. What's this? Rare woven, vintage rare woven Lily Dax. Lily Dax silk necktie. Let's look into that. Again, another theme on it. Looks like there's some birds or something like that on there. Let's see if we can get a tag. All right, it looks like it's a little chain. That's cool. The Highlander. Not sure what that means. Yeah, I'm gonna definitely look at this some more. I would check it out as well. I mean, with ties, if you could be selling these things for twenty or thirty bucks each, like one thing I one like thing I like about the ties is first of all, you can usually get them cheap. Secondly, they're easy to store. I mean. 
you guys have seen my storage unit. I've got about five or six hundred pieces in there, and I actually have to rent out a storage unit for 150 bucks a month because you know it takes up a lot of room. The thing with ties is they don't. You could probably fit 300 ties in a little bucket, which isn't going to take up much space. So that's cool. I like the idea about that. And third, I mean, it's really easy to ship and cheap to ship, so the profits are definitely there. So, uh, like I said, ties are something I'm really looking to get into. Let me copy this and put this back on my list. So it looks like we got six ties and seven other like shirt brands, sweater brands. Let me find one more tie brand, and I'm going to roll out of here. Again, sorry, I'm not super enthusiastic and pumped up. I'm just kind of relaxing. Been a long day today. But uh, just, you know, putting in some work late night. It's not even that late, but just putting some work in on a Friday night. All right, here's the last brand we're going to mess with. It looks like it is... Wait, did I already do this brand? Yeah, I already did that brand. I'm not going to use that. We already went through this brand, uh, the Vitaliano brand. 62 bucks. So this brand's definitely selling. Let's find one more brand. Wow, look at this. 50 ties for $20. Here's another lot of 10. So it looks like people are selling, um, definitely selling the ties in lots, like you said down there in the comment section. I want to find one more brand that I've never heard of before. Which may be easier said than done. All right, here we go. I don't know if I've ever heard of this brand. Zilly? Sounds like it may be familiar, but I'm not sure. Let's see. Let's see what the tag looks like. Well, it's hard to see, but Zilly, that looks like a brand I'm definitely going to want to research. $34.99, 11 bids, so there's definitely a market for that. All right, add that onto my list. All right, so if you want to uh, pause the screen right here and take down the list, feel free to do it. Um, let me add something right here. So this was, these were sweaters. You know, obviously these brands, they might make other, you know, different types of items. But this is just kind of where I found them under. So these were some sweater brands that I found and some tie brands. So if you want, feel free to pause this video and write down the, the brands, put them in your memory banks. Maybe you could go out and find them when you're out to thrift stores, yard sales, auctions, Craigslist, Facebook groups, so many places to get inventory. So uh, you can, you know, potentially make yourself some money. But uh, that's pretty much it for the video. I'm going to go through the comments section one more time. If you want to uh, get an, a question answered or you want to say what up or get shouted out, I'll wait one more minute to go into the comments section. And um, then I'm going to call it quits for this video. But again, I had fun today. Had fun going through and educating myself. If you like these videos, if you like the research, again, I know they're not that exciting, but if you enjoy maybe listening to me talk about different brands and talk about different styles while you're listing or just messing around on a computer, hit the thumbs up, leave a comment, let me know you like these, I'll keep making them. If not, that's cool. Um, I'll focus on other types of videos. But I always love making these videos and interacting with you folks and learning together and kind of just moving forward as we go on our journey to make more money. So many ways to make money, eBay, Amazon, Craigslist, I mean, Etsy, the list goes on and on. So uh, it's just, I feel honored to be able to uh, share some time with you folks and, uh, you know, help each other out. That's really what it's all about, helping each other out to grow. There's plenty of, you know, money to be made by all of us. There's no need to be greedy or be scared to share the wealth um, because there's just so much opportunity out there. But let's go into the comments one last time. See if there's any uh, anybody who has a question or wants to get shouted out, and I will uh, finish it up from there. Got 33 people in the house. I've already answered pretty much all these questions. The Nashville Music Man, you recommend having a store? Definitely. If you're selling at least... Um, like an item a day or so, you probably should get a store. Type in eBay store calculator, I believe, and that's the keyword into Google, and they'll actually, they'll kind of like, they'll, they'll ask you questions like how many items you sell per month, um, a few other questions. You just input all your answers, and it'll let you know if it's worth it for you to get a store or not. So check that out. But I really like the store because you could uh, make it look nice. You could set your own categories. You could run sales. 
and you just look more professional. So having a store is definitely beneficial. <clears throat> Jay Zepp says, I'm in Florida, never could find Kuji. I mean, they're out there. You're, you'll find it once in a while, but those things are really hot, and you're in Florida, so there's probably not a lot of people wearing sweaters. But if you come down to the East Coast, uh, you know, to the Connecticut area, you're, they're out there all the time. But like I said earlier, certain things that you find here, you won't find where you are, and certain, th certain things that you find where you are, I won't find over here. <clears throat> Neuromantu says, well, first of all, what's going on? If he says, he or she says, if the tie is silk, don't wash it. Most ties should be dry cleaned. All right, well, that answers the question right there. Dry clean your ties. <clears throat> Do it Keen says, our Goodwill. Our Goodwill, $2 for the ties. I have no idea. I have no idea about them. Bought one with Grinch. <laughs> yeah, that's why we're learning together, you know. We're, we're educating ourselves and, uh, you know, just learning. That's really what it's all about. But two bucks for ties can't beat that. Unless you go to the weigh and pay and you pay five to 20 cents a tie. All right. Let's see if there's any more questions. And Vic says, do you find a certain day of the week better than others to go to the thrift stores? Um, well, I'll give you one example over at the Savers in Connecticut. On, I believe on, let's see, let me get this right. On Sundays and Mondays, I believe, don't quote me, the people in the back don't put any new inventory out. So on Tuesday, they put a lot of new inventory out. And Tuesday, usually like the racks are really full and there's a lot of new inventory. So I prefer going on the Tuesdays over there. So that's one example um, for our Savers when it's a good time to go. At least where I am, it could be different where you live. Um, on the Goodwills over here in Connecticut, Sundays they run a half off a certain color day, so the colors switch over Sunday, so the inventory that was priced out of the market gets knocked down. A certain color will get knocked down 50%, and I'll scoop up a lot of stuff there. Also at the Salvation Army on Wednesdays, they have a 50% off sale, so I like going on the sale days, keeping the inventory cost of goods down as much as possible, and um, yeah, let's see, hope that answered the question. Janet McDaniel says, is it worth selling on Amazon if you're not doing FBA? I mean, yeah, I mean, certain items do really well, merchant fulfilled. If you're selling on Amazon, for example, video games like uh, like Mario or Donkey Kong, those games, you put them up competitively priced on merchant as a merchant, I mean, they could sell literally within 10 seconds. So certain items sell good merchant. Other items uh, sell better FBA. More people trust FBA because they're being shipped from the Amazon warehouse and they can get it you know, as a prime member within two days, and they know that their item is going to be what they think it's going to be. So um, you can also get more money as an FBA, typically, but recently I've been noticing a lot of FBA guys going really cheap. But that's just one example right there. You can definitely still sell things as a merchant, but I'm not a huge expert when it comes to Amazon. Definitely check out uh, Dallas Moore. He's got a uh, Facebook page, Picking Live. Check him out. He's got some really good information. Um... Mike over at Global Voodoo has got some really good Amazon information as well. Sandra Rick says two to three bucks. I think that's referring to the ties. Going through the last of the comments. Looks like that's about it. Looks like we got Black Falcon 235 in the house. What is happening? Another cool name right there. And that looks like that is about it for the questions. I appreciate everybody watching this video. Again, I know it wasn't the most exciting thing, but still, hopefully you learned a few things. Um, if you're just tuning in, check out this list. These are some uh, brands that we found while we were going through this live hangout, some sweater brands and some tie brands. These brands might also um, be applicable to other types of items as well, as certain brands do make more than one type of item. But pause this video, write down these brands. Hopefully you learned something. Um, in, any, in any event, um, I, I really had a lot of fun. If you guys are interested in learning more about clothing, definitely check out my latest clothing guide. It is called... Let me see. Um, I don't know where I'm going to find the picture, but it's called 101 Killer Clothing Brands, and it pretty much talks about you know all the 
101 clothing brands I like to buy. Shows you a picture of the tag. Talks about what to buy, what to avoid. It will also go in depth in terms of things that, you know, certain styles that do really well, jackpot items that you want to be looking for. Like, for example, I always say this example, the Ralph Lauren polo stuff. The purple label stuff is definitely considered a jackpot item. But uh, check that out. I'll leave a uh, annotation on the screen after and a link in the, in the uh, description. Check out the book. Also check out uh, me, the Bonafide Hustler, the College Picker, and Retro Aficionado in the Green Room. It is a paid subscription-based Facebook group, and uh, there's a lot of good stuff going on over there. It is $100 a year, but um, like I said, a lot of good information. You get one-on-one -on -one contact with all four of the admins. We post bolo items daily. A lot of really cool interaction by the, the members inside of there. We post articles. We offer exclusive discounts on products that we release and a lot more and um, it's growing I think we're up to about 80 80 something members now so every day we're learning a lot I'm learning a lot from the members in there as well um, especially about Amazon there's a lot of good Amazon experts in there but yeah again hopefully you enjoyed this video if you did hit the like button leave a comment below if you want me to make more videos and if you're not already subscribe to my channel favorite these videos and uh, share with your friends so uh, have yourselves a good night. Keep on picking and making that money, and I will talk to you guys soon. Take care.